Hello, young Harding. You're early. Yes, I've finished up. It was too late to start anything fresh. What's all this fuss about in the papers tonight, Mr. Cavell? Wars and rumors of wars. Crying wolf? Someday a wolf will come. These fools are capable of anything. In that case, what happens to medical research? It has to stop. That'll mess me up. Mess you up. Mess everything up. My God, if war gets loose again. Happy Christmas, everyone. While shepherds watch their flocks by night, don't <laughs> see dead on the ground. What's the matter with you fellas? Oh, that. Huh. This little upset across the water doesn't mean anything. Threatened men live long and threatened wars never occur. <laughs> Another speech by him. And I tell you, there's nothing in it. It's just to buck people up about the air estimates. Now, why meet wars halfway? Why not look on the bright side of things? You're all right. Your business is going up. You've got a jolly wife, a pretty home. All's right with the world, eh? Mm. All's right with the world. Certainly. Passworthy, you should have been called Pippa Passworthy. Oh, and Cabal, you've been smoking too much. You're not, uh, you're not eupeptic. <laughs> oh, come on, it's Christmas. Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the king of Israel. Nice toys they have nowadays. Nice toys. The toys we had were simpler, ever so much simpler. Noah's Ark, and wooden soldiers. Nothing complex like these. You know, I wonder sometimes if perhaps all these new toys aren't a bit too much for them. It teaches them to use their hands. And I suppose their grandchildren will see even more wonderful things. Progress. Progress. I'd like to see the wonders they'll see. Don't be too sure of progress. Oh, listen to the incurable pessimist. And what's to stop progress nowadays? War. Firstly, there isn't going to be a war. And secondly, war doesn't stop progress. It stimulates progress. Yes, war can be a highly stimulating thing. But you can overdo a stimulant. Oh, well, after all, I'll be exaggerating the horrors of war. Don't we rather overdo that song? After all, you know, the last war wasn't as bad as some people make out. We didn't worry. Something, something great seemed to have got hold of us. Something greater still may get hold of us next time. If we don't end war, war will end us. Well, what can you do? Yeah. What can we do? Good will to old men. <laughs> Real old-fashioned Christmas this year. Fresh little snow with a nip in the air, eh? <laughs> what is that? Sounded like a gun. Oh, no guns here. Merry Christmas, Cabell. Here's to another good year for all of us. Another year of recovery, eh? <laughs> what are searchlights doing now? Yes. Well, it must be anti-aircraft maneuvers. Maneuvers at Christmas? No. Listen, guns again. Yeah. Cabal speaking. The hill down my old drum is free. Mobilization. Oh God. Perhaps it's only precaution in mobilization. The unknown aircraft passed over Sea Beach and dropped bombs within a few hundred yards of the waterworks. They then turned seaward again. By this time, they've been picked up with the searchlights of the battleship Dinosaur. Before they could mount out of range, she had opened upon them with her anti-aircraft gun. Unfortunately, without result. Of course, everyone has said this time they'll start without any declaration of war. Oh, listen. We do not yet know the nationality of these aircraft, though, of course, there can be little doubt of that place of origin. But before all things, it is necessary for the country to keep calm. No doubt the losses suffered by the fleet are serious. That things. losses of the fleet? Listen, listen. And it is imperative that the whole nation should at once stand to arms. Orders for a general mobilization have been issued, and the precautionary civilian organization against gas will at once be put into operation. Our instructions have just come to hand. 
We shall cut off for five minutes, and then read you the general instructions. Please call in all your friends. Call in everyone you can. You've got your stimulant, Passworthy. Something great has got you. War has come. My God, if they've attacked without a declaration of war, then it's vengeance. No quarter, vengeance. Punishment. Condign punishment, or else the end of civilization altogether. But it's just possible there's some mistake. You know, I cling to that. If not, then it's war to the knife. No, it's, it's not a war, it's extermination of dangerous vermin. A vermin hunt without pause or pity. Well, good night. Why should we surrender life to the brutes and fools? I loved you. I wanted to serve you and, and make life happy for you. But think of the things that may happen to them. Were we selfish? You weren't afraid to bear them. We were children yesterday. We're anxious. But we're not afraid. Really. Courage, my dear. And may that little heart have courage. Are you an officer, Daddy? Well, you've got to do your bit, you know, Sonny. You've got to do your bit. I'm an officer, too, Daddy. <laughs> That's the spirit. Carry on, sir. Carry on. <laughs> Goodbye, son. There. All right. Quick, boss.
bad shape. Eh? Why does it come to this? God, why do we have to murder each other? Go, my friend. That is my guess. It's a bad guess. Funny if I'm... if I'm killed by my own poison. Quick, get this... <coughs> I've given plenty to others. Why should I not have some myself? Give it to her. I'm done. <coughs> Breathe through your mouth. <coughs> Yes, on her. Maybe I've killed her father and mother. Maybe I've killed her whole family. <coughs> and then I go and give up my mask to save her. <coughs> that, that's funny. <coughs> that, that's a joke. <coughs> How can I sleep? 
see how they wander out to die. Something might be known. Oh, Janet. And you, you poor dear. Richard. I might be infected. Is there nothing to make her comfortable? Nothing. There's nothing will make anyone comfortable anymore. The pestilence has ceased. Thanks to the determined action of our chief in shooting all wanderers, there have been no cases for two months. The pestilence has been conquered. The chief is preparing to resume hostilities against the hill people with the utmost vigor. Soon we shall have victory and peace. All is well. God save the chief. God save our land. Any more insulated wire? We've got no rubber wire at all, sir. Any rubber tape? There's not a scrap left in the place. We used the last on the other motor. Oh, what's the use? There's no petrol anyway. I don't believe there's three gallons of petrol left in this accursed ruin of a town. What's the good of setting here a job like this? Nothing will ever fly again. Flying's over. Everything's over. Civilization's dead. <laughs> The road, isn't it? Yes. It's a good pre-pestilence machine. I oil it and turn it over at times. You think it'll go fast someday, still? Oh, I'm not one of your petrol hoarders. But all the same, that engine turns over still. 
Why, I remember when I was a lad, when it was new, we thought nothing of going a hundred miles in it. A whole hundred miles. Less than three hours I've done it in. Oh, that sort of thing's all gone now. Gone forever, huh? That's right, sir. Yep, yep. Richard. What is it? You won't think me mad. Why, darling? I thought I heard an airplane this morning. At dawn. I thought it was a dream, but... Nonsense. I tell you, flying's finished. We shall never get in the air again. Never. I'll get petrol for you, trust me. You look after the machines. I know you haven't got the stuff, but you can get round that. For example, transfer parts. Use bits of one to mend another. Be resourceful. Give me only ten machines in working order. Give me only five. I don't want them all. And we'll end this war of ours forever. I'll see you get your reward. Your wife, Gordon? You keep her well hidden. Sanitation lady. Would use your influence with our master mechanic. The competent state wants his service. I'm sure my husband does his best for you. Uh, that's hardly enough, lady. The competent state demands miracles. Not everyone could work miracles as you do, Chief. Oh, I'm sure you could work miracles if you tried, lady. Rudolph! Lady, lady, I showed it to you, but you said you didn't want it. Watsky's been up to his tricks again. He'll have to answer for them. But he's been keeping things back from me again. Only Watsky keeps things back. What do you think of our master mechanic here? The one that behind those planes of mine to win this war of ours with the Hillman. Well, can't you make him? I thought you could make everybody do everything. Some things you can't do, madam. You can't fly without petrol. You can't mend machines without tools or materials. You've gone back too far. Flying's become a lost skill in every town. So are you really as stupid as that? I'm as hopeless as that. And now, Chief, what are you going to do about it? He's going to let me have those machines, and I'm going to let him have coal. Stuff to make oil. It's a lost skill. It's a dream of the... It is. You were right. A plane once more. Look, there he is. Oh, He's shutting off. He's coming down. What's the meaning of this? They got airplanes before us. And you told me we couldn't fly anymore. While we've been fumbling, they've been active. Here's some of you, you and you. Find out who this is and what it means. There's only one man in it. Hold him. Somewhere they can still make new machines. I didn't dream it was still possible. Yes, but who is this man? How does he dare come here? Pitch him to the town hall. Guard his machine and bring him to me there. Come along, Mary. I must see that machine. Who's in control of this part of the country? The chief. What we call the boss. Good. I want to see him. He sent me to arrest you. You can't do that. But I'll come and see him. Well, you're under arrest whether you'll admit it or not. The country's in a state of war. Well, come along. I know the way. I remember this place well. I used to live over there for years. Ever heard of a man named Partworthy? Harding? Look, 
Here he comes now. Yes, thank you. So you're hot. I seem to remember something about you. You were a young man. You're John Cabell. I remember you. I used to visit your house here, endless years ago before the wars. You're still flying. Your hair is gray, but you look young enough. How are things here? Who's in control in this place? Well, we have a chief, a warlord. The usual thing. I want to look up your warlord. Where can we go and talk? In my laboratory is the best thing. It's just over here. Right. Here! You can't go in there. You're under arrest. You've got to go with me to the chief. All in good time. I must see this gentleman first. Well, you've got to go with me. Orders are orders. The boss first. Hardy. He has to be brought here. I must deal with him. Yeah, you can't go to him. That's impossible. He must come to you. But send another man for him. Send three men. He's got to be brought here. So that's the sort of man your boss is. Not an unusual type. Everywhere we find these little semi-military upstarts robbing and fighting. That's what endless warfare has led to. Brigandage. What else could happen? But we, who are all that are left of the old engineers and mechanics, have pledged ourselves to salvage the world. We have the airways, all that's left of them. We have the seas. And we have ideas in common. The brotherhood of efficiency. The Freemasonry of science. We're the last trustees of civilization when everything else has failed. I've been waiting for this. I'm yours to command. Not mine. Not mine. No more bosses. Civilization's to command. Tell him he'll have to come. He won't come on foot. Well, we'll have to carry him. I don't know what'll happen to me, sir, if you don't come. Who are you? Do you know this country's at war? At war? Still at it, eh? We must clean that up. What do you mean, we must clean that up? All war? Who are you, I say? The law. Law and sanity. I am the law here. I said law and sanity. Where do you come from? Who are you? Wings over the world. Well, you know you can't come into a country like this in this fashion? I'm here. Do you mind if I sit down? And now, for the fourth time, who are you? I tell you, wings over the world. That's nothing. What government do you under? Common sense. I belong to world communication. We just run ourselves. Yeah. You run into trouble if you try and land here in wartime. What's the game? Order and trade. Trade, eh? Can you do anything in munitions? Not our line of business. Fuel, spare parts. We've got planes, we've got planes. I've got boys that have trained a bit on the ground. We've no fuel. It hampers us. We might do a deal. We might. I know where I can get some fuel. I've got my plans later, but if you can manage a temporary accommodation, we'd do business. World communications helps no one to make war. End war, end war. I want to make victorious peace. I seem to have heard that phrase before, when I was a young man. But it made no end of war. Now, look here, Mr. Aviator. Let's see how we stand. Come down to actuality. The way you swagger, you don't seem to realize you're under arrest. You and your machine. You will find other planes looking for me if I happen to be delayed. We'll deal with them later. Now, you can start a trading agency here if you like. I have no objection. The first thing we shall want is to get our planes in the air again. Right. A laudable ambition. But our new order has an objection to private aeroplanes. The impudence. I'm not talking about private aeroplanes. Our aeroplanes are public aeroplanes. This is an independent, sovereign state at war. I know nothing about any old order. I'm the chief here, and I'm not taking any orders, old or new, from you. Suppose I've walked into trouble. Yeah, you can take that as right. Where have you come from? I flew from my headquarters at Bazaar this morning. We have some hundreds of new type planes and we're building more, fast. The factories are working again. We're gradually restoring order and trade in the whole Mediterranean area. We're scouting this region now to see how things are. You found out. 
This is an independent, sovereign state. Yes, we must talk about that. We don't discuss it. We don't approve of independent, sovereign states. You don't approve? We mean to stop them. That's war. If you will. All right, I think we know how we stand. Burton, take this man. If he gives you any trouble, club him. You hear that, Mr. Wings over your wits? My friends know my whereabouts. If I don't come back, they'll send a force to find me. Perhaps they won't find you. They'll find you. They'll find me ready. Take him to the detention room downstairs. Now, was that wise? Wise? Yes, wise, to quarrel with him at once. Quarrel with him? Confound him, he began to quarrel with me. <laughs> you must clean that up. Clean that up? My wall. There's things behind him. Things behind him? Some sort of aerial bus driver standing up to me. Like an equal. So you lost your temper and you bullied him. I don't bully, I just handle the man. He's the first real aviator that has come this way for years. Think of what that means, my dear. You want aeroplanes, don't you? You want your aeroplanes put in order? A really clever man could have had some of those machines up long ago. I'm sure of it. Along comes this stranger who's going to clean me up. You expect me to hand my planes over to him, lock, stock and barrel? Why talk nonsense? You could have persuaded him under supervision. Supervision? The sort of oafs I've got here to supervise him. It'd be too much for them. Oh, well, of course, if it's going to be too much for you, why did you hang him and hide his machine before the others are after you? I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. Now, this stranger hadn't taken me by surprise. I knew he was coming. Yes, I knew he was coming. I felt this conspiracy of their bus drivers brewing somewhere in the world. I felt they were getting ahead with their aeroplanes down there somewhere. Very well, now's our chance. We've got this fella bottled up. They won't even begin to miss him for days. I've got everything fixed now for an attack straight away on the Floss Valley to the old coal and shale pits where there's oil too. Then, up we buzz. <laughs> been in vain. Our old struggle with the Hillman has come to its climax. Our new victory at the coal pits has brought a great supply of oil within our reach. Once more, we may hope to take the air and look our invaders in the face. If 40 aeroplanes, large a force, I venture to say, as any in the world, this new oil can be adapted to our need. That's quite a simple business. Nothing remains but the conclusive bombing of the hills. Then for a time, we can hope for a rich, rewarding peace. A peace of the strong man armed who keepeth his house. And now, at this supreme crisis, you, Gordon, our master mechanic, refuse your help. Where are my planes? The job's more difficult than you think. Our few machines are hopelessly old. You have them 20 sound ones. To be exact, 19. You'll never get the others off the ground. The thing can't be done as you imagine it. I want assistance. What assistance? Your prisoner. But you want that chap in black that wings over the world? You want him released? He knows his business. I don't. Now, make him my technical advisor. I don't trust you technical chaps. Then you won't get an aeroplane up. I want those planes. Well, if you get it. Then I want Dr. Harding out, too. Where are those associates? I can't help that. If anybody in every town can adapt to that crude oil for our aeroplanes, it's Harding. If not, it can't be done. Oh, we had a bit of an argument with Harding. He's the only man who can do this work for you.
Undo his hand. Well? Well what? The salute. Damn the salute. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, never mind the salute now. We'll talk about that later. Now, look here. Let's see how we stand. You, Gordon, are to undertake the reconstruction of our air force. The prisoner, Cabell, is to be placed at your disposal. Everywhere he goes, he's to be under guard and observation. No relaxing in there. Neither you nor he are to go within a hundred yards of his airplane. Mind that. Now, you, Harding, are to assist Gordon with his cure problem and place your knowledge of poison gas at our disposal. I have nothing to do with poison gas. You've got the knowledge of our to wring it out of you. Stitch, your mother, your father... But totality of your interests. No discipline can be too severe for the man that denies that by word or deed. Nonsense. We have a duty to civilization. You and your thought are driving us straight back to eternal barbarism. But this is pure treason. I protest against being dragged away from my work. Confound your silly war, your war material, and all the rest of it. All my life has been interrupted and wasted and spoiled by war. I will not stand any longer. But this is treason, treason, coward. We have need of your service. Well, what do you want? You're conscripted. You're under my orders now, and under no other orders in the world. I'm master here. I'm the state. I need fuel and gas. Neither fuel nor gas. You refuse? Absolutely. I don't want to be forced to extremities. May I have a word? I understand you want all of those out-of-date clocks of yours, which you call your Air Force, to fly again, and fly well. They shall! With the help of that man, Cabell, you have in the cell, Dr. Harding here, and we even have a dozen of your planes in the air again. You! You're a traitor to civilization. I won't touch it! If you will give me Cabell, and if you leave me free to talk with Harding, I promise you you'll see your Air Force, a third of it at any rate. In the sky again. You talk as if you're driving a bargain with me. I'm sorry, Chief. It's not I who makes these conditions. This is the nature of things. You're going to have technical services. You're going to have scientific help without treating the men who give it to you properly. That's what I've said all along. You're bullying too hard, my dear. And there's a limit to bullying. Why? You can't make a dog hunt by beating it? I want those planes! <laughs> And commanders, a help. Our war leader, our peacemaker, Rudolph the Victorious. My captains, my commanders, I greet you. Will anything in life be better than this hope? You face difficulties and dangers, but now at this bright moment of victory, we relax to gather strength for the supreme effort that will make this land forever ours. Yeah. A man's land we are making, a land for strength and for courage. None but the brave deserve the land. None but the brave deserve the fair. <laughs> our dear old world, our dear old land. There are some among us that dare to run down our land. It isn't this, it isn't that, it isn't what it used to be. We haven't got chemists. Well, who wants chemists? <laughs> they don't print books anymore. Well, who wants books to muddle their thoughts and their ideas? We can't travel anymore. Well, isn't our land good enough for us? Oh, you I wanted to look at you. I am at your service, madam. You're the most interesting thing that has happened in every town for years. You are me. You come from outside. I forgot to forget there was anything outside. I want to hear about it. May I offer you my only chair? You know, I'm not a stupid woman. I'm sure. This life here is limited. War always going on and never ending. Flags, marching. Oh, I adore the chief. I've always adored him since he took control in the pestilence days when everyone else lost heart. He rules. He's firm. Everyone, every woman finds him strong and attractive. I can't complain. I have everything that is to be had here. And yet, this is a small, limited world we live in. You bring in the breath of something greater. 
When I saw you swooping down out of the air, when I saw you marching into the town hall, I felt this man lives in a greater world. And you spoke of the Mediterranean and the East, of your camps and factories. I read about the Mediterranean and Egypt and Greece and India. Oh, I can read a lot of those old books. I'm not like most of the younger people here. I learned a lot before education stopped and schools closed down. I want to see that world. Skies. Snowy mountains, blue seas, sunshine, If I had my way, you could fly to all that in a couple of hours. If you were free, and if I was free. I don't suppose any man has ever understood any woman since the beginning of things. You don't understand our imagination, how wild our imaginations can be. I wish I were a man. Oh, if I were a man. What do your people try to do to us? What are you going to do to this boss of mine? The immediate question seems, what does he mean to do to me? Something violent and foolish, unless I prevent it. That's how I see things. And if he kills you? We shall come here and clean things up. But if you're killed, how can you say we? We go on. That's how things are. We are taking hold of things. In science and government in the long run, no man is indispensable. The human things go on. We, forever. I see. And this warlike state of ours here. It has to vanish, like the Tyrannosaurus and the saber-toothed tiger. Oh, so here you are. I said I could talk to him, and I have. I told you to leave that fellow alone. Yes, and sat up there drinking and swaggering and looking as proud as you could, Rudolph the Victorious. And here am I trying to find out what this black invader means. You think I wanted to come and talk to him? This gray, cold man? While you're swaggering here, there are more planes away there at Basra getting ready. Basra? His headquarters. Have you never heard of Basra? These are matters for us to talk about. This lady has been putting me through a severe cross-examination. But the gist of it is that away there in Basra, new airplanes are rising night and day, like hornets round a hornet's nest. What happens to me is a small affair. They'll finish you. The new world of United Airmen will finish you. Listen, you can almost hear them coming now. Not a bit of it. What he says is the truth. What he says is bluff. Make peace with the Airmen and let him go. That means surrender of our sovereign independence. But more machines will be coming and more and more. And he's here. Hostage for their good behavior. Come, madam, enough of this little diplomatic mission of yours. You've got the subtlety of a bullfrog. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what she's been saying to you. I don't much care. There's no making peace between you and me. It's your world or mine, and it's going to be mine. Roll your threats of swarms of hornets and so on, you're a hostage, remember that. Don't be too sure you win. So just sit here and think that over, Mr. Wings over the world. Now get round to the other side and look at these engine bear bracelets quickly. I could get to my plane as a wireless there. Hope that they won't even trust me. You shall have to make a job of this. I can manage to get your reserve petrol. Let me have that for this plane. Good. It won't be easy to make a getaway. These oil pump connections aren't very good, but we'll have to risk it. I think we'll manage it all right now that Harding knows his part of the job. Good.
do you come from? Come from the north. Never time. Yes, Cabal is a prisoner. They've got him, sir. He's in danger. I had great difficulty in getting here. You say Cabal is in danger? In very great danger. The bus there is a violent cop. Hmm. Job for our new squadron. Well, now we've got a chance to try the new gas of peace on somebody. There's no time to lose, sir. May I report to headquarters? Yes. Take him to the council. At last, we have definite news. What is it? Gordon didn't fall into the sea. He got away. A fishing boat saw him making for the French coast. Perhaps he reached his pal. Well... Well, he'll be coming back. He'll be bringing the others with him. Curse these world communications. Curse all airmen and gasmen and machine men. Why didn't we leave their machines and their sciences alone? I might have known. Why did I tamper with flying? Well, we needed airplanes against the hill states. Somebody else would have started in again with aeroplanes and gas and bombs if we hadn't. These people would have come interfering anyhow. Why was all this science ever allowed? Why was it ever let begin? Science is an enemy of everything that's natural in life. I dreamt of those fellows last night, great, ugly, black, inhuman chaps. Oh, like machines, bombing and bombing. Yes, I guess they'll come bombing, all right. Then we'll fight them. Since Gordon got away, I've had those air boys up to see me. They've got guts. They'll do something still. We'll fight them. We'll fight them. Ha! You've got hostages? We didn't shoot them anyway. There's that chap Harding. Of course. He can tell us what to do against this gas. If I had to pull his arm off and knock his teeth down his throat. Get him! Get him! Get him. Get him. Get him. I have to come to Earth sometime. What is this? World communications. A handful of men like ourselves. They're not magic. Well, communication people, they got gas? What sort of gas? I know nothing about gas. Tell us about these masks, anyway. Well, they're rotten. They're no good at all. What sort of gas have they got? I tell you, gas isn't my business. Well, they can't gas us when you're here, anyway. Here they are! Listen! They're coming already! Where the rest of 
gas mask, but thanks to that, I'm here and everyone else is sleeping. I wonder if they'll ever use gas masks again. Sir! What is it? This man's not sleeping. He's dead. Dead in his world, dead with him, and a new world beginning. Poor old boss, he and his flags and his folly. And now for the rule of the earth, and a new life for mankind. But we have the unity of a common order and a common knowledge. This is how I conceive our plan of operations. First, the roundup of brigands. That last dismal vestige of ancient predatory soldiery. The last would-be conquerors. Then settle, organize, advance. This zone, then that. And at last, wings over the world. And the new world begins. Do you realize the immense task we shall undertake when we set ourselves to an active and aggressive peace? When we direct our energies to tear out the wealth of this planet and exploit all these giant possibilities of science that have been squandered hitherto upon war and senseless competition? 
We shall excavate the eternal hills. We shall make such use of the treasures of sky and sea and earth as men have never dreamt of hitherto. I would that I could see our children's children in this world we shall win for them. But in them and through them, we shall live again.
It's any better world than it used to be. I rebel against this progress. What has this progress, this world civilization done to us? Machines and marvels. They've built these great cities of theirs, yes. They've prolonged life, yes. They've conquered nature, they say, and made a great white world. Is it any jollier than the world used to be in the good old days, when life was short and hot and merry and the devil took the hindmost? All the same, what can we do about it? Rebel. And rebel now, now, now is the time. Why now in particular? Why, because of this space gun business. Because of this project to shoot human beings at the stars. People don't like it, shooting humans away into hard, frozen darkness. They're murmuring. They've murmured before and nothing came of it. Because they had no leader. But now, suppose someone cried, Halt! Stop this progress! Suppose I shouted to the world, Make an end to this progress. I could talk, talk. Radio is everywhere. This modern world is full of voices. I'm a master craftsman. I have the right to talk. Yes, but will they listen to you? They'll listen, trust them. If I shout, arise, awake, stop this progress before it is too late. They built houses like that in the old days. Why? They'd no light inside their cities as we have, so they had to stick them up into the daylight. What there was of it. They'd no properly mixed and conditioned air. Everybody lives half out of doors. <coughs> they have windows with ripples last. The age of windows lasted four centuries. We never seemed to realize that we could light the interiors of our houses with sunshine of our own. So there was no need to stick them up ever so high into the air. Weren't people tired going up and down those stairs? They were all tired. And they had a disease called cold. Everybody had colds, and they coughed and sneezed and ran at the eyes. What sneeze? Oh, you know. A tissue. A tissue? Yeah. Everybody had a tissue. That must have been funny. Not so funny as you think. And you remember all that, great grandfather? Well, I remember some of it. Colds we had, and indigestion, too, from the queer bad foods we had. Oh, it was a poor life, never really well. Did people last it? Well, they had a way of grinning at it. They used to call it humor. We had to have a lot of humor. I went through some horrid times, my dear. Oh, horrid. Horrid? I don't want to hear about that. The wars. Wandering sickness and all those dreadful years. None of that will come again, great granddad, ever. Well, not if progress goes on. They keep on inventing new things now, don't they? And making life lovelier and lovelier. Lovelier, yes. And bolder. I suppose I'm an old man, my dear, but some of it seems like going too far. This space gun of theirs that they keep on shooting. What is? This space gun, great grandfather. Well, it's a gun that is charged by electricity. It's a lot of guns inside one another, and each one discharges the gun next inside. I don't properly understand it, but the cylinder it shoots out last goes swish right away from the earth. I wish I could fly around the moon. <laughs> well, that in time. Won't you come back to your history pictures again? I'm glad I didn't live in the old world. I know that John Cabal and his airmen tidied it all up. Did you see John Cabal, great granddad? Well, you can see him in your pictures. But you saw him when he lived. You really saw him? Yes. I saw the great John Cabal with my own eyes when I was a little boy. He was a lean, brown old man with hair as white as mine. He was the great grandfather of our Oswald Cabal, the president of our council.
I take it the space gun's passed all its preliminary trials, and there's nothing left now but to choose the two who are to go. That's going to be the trouble. Thousands of young people have been applying, young men and young women. I never dreamt the moon was so attractive. Practically, the gun's perfect now. There are risks, but reasonable risks. And the position of the moon in the next three or four months gives us the best conditions for getting there. It's only the, the choice of the two now that matters. Well? There are going to be difficulties. That man Theotokopoulos is talking on the radio about it. He's a fantastic fellow. Yes, but he's making trouble. It's not going to be easy to choose these young people. With all these thousands offering themselves, we've looked into thousands of cases. We've rejected everyone of imperfect health or anyone who had friends who objected. And the fact is, we want you to talk to two people. There's Raymond Parsworthy of General Fabric. You know him? Yes, I know him. And his son. We want you to see the son, Maurice Parsworthy. Why? He asks to go. We think you ought to see him. He's waiting here. Is Morris Passworthy there? He's on his way. Good. You want to talk to me? Forgive me, sir. I came straight to you. You're asking a favor? A very big favor. I want to be one of the first two human beings to go around the moon. It means danger. Great hardship, anyhow. You realize there's an even chance of never coming back alive. A still greater chance of coming back a cripple. Give me credit for not minding that, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of you young people don't mind that. But why should I give you a favor? Well, I'm, I'm the son of a friend of yours. And, uh, people seem to feel you wouldn't to send someone you don't know, sir. Go on. We've talked about this over and over again. We? Yes, both of us. It's her idea even more than it's mine. Her idea? Who is she? Someone much closer to you than I am, sir. Go on. It's Catherine, your daughter. She says you can't possibly send anybody's child but your own. I might have known. Today I'm going to put it to the world plainly. Is this thing to go on, or are we sane and normal human beings to put an end to it, and an end to all such follies forever? What is this progress? What is the good of all this progress onward and onward? We demand a halt. We demand a rest. The object of life is happy living. We will not have human life sacrificed to experiment. Progress is not living. It should only be the preparation for living. They stage the old Greek tragedy again. And a father offers up his daughter to his evil gods. And that and voice is sounding to the whole world. No. The old slaveries have taken new no. names. They'll have to hear him and make what they can of him. What does this space gun portend? Make no mistake about it. The slaveries they put upon themselves today, they will impose tomorrow upon the whole world. Is man never to rest, never to be free? A time will come when you in your turn will be forced away to take your chance upon strange planets and in dreary, abominable places beyond the stars. An end to progress. Make an end to this progress now. Let this be the last day of the scientific age. Make the space gun the symbol of all that drives us and destroy it now. I wonder what they will make. great-grandson of John Gabal, the air dictator, the man who changed the whole course of the world. You, you've got experiment in your blood, you and your daughter. But I'm, I'm more normal. I don't believe my boy would have thought of it. The two of them must have got together. They'll come back together. This time, there's no attempt to land on the moon. 
When, when is this great experiment to be made? How much longer have we got before they go? When the space gun is ready. Sometime this year, do you mean? Soon. Then, is there no way of saving our children from this madness? But would it be saving our children? Well, here they are. Father, where to go? Yes, you're to go. No. Two hours ago. Already? Why not? But my son, he's of age. He's volunteered. Yes, but I want to talk it over first. I must talk it over. Why have you announced this so soon? There is still time to talk it over, isn't there? Not so very long now, Father. You've got several months yet, surely. It's just one month and three days. Everything's ready. And the moon's coming into the right position even while we're talking now. They're leaving it a month longer to make sure. You mean you're going in four weeks? Four weeks? I forbid it. This man, Theotokopoulos, is right. This thing must not be. It's human sacrifice. Your feet have struck fire. All the people are excited and angry. Some are already going out of the city towards the space gun. Nothing is wanted now but deeding. We must go right on with this. To the space gun. And so we end an age. Young people, just beginning life. You want to go into that outer horror. Why don't you send somebody who's sick of life? They want fit young people, alert and quick. And we're fit young people. We can observe and come back and tell. Cabal, I just want to ask you one plain question. Why did you let your daughter dream of going on this mad moon journey? Because I love her. And I wanted to live to the best effect. Dragging out life to the last possible second is not living to the best effect. The nearer the phone, the sweeter the meat. The best of life, Passworthy, lies nearest to the edge of death. I'm a broken man. I don't know where honor lies. You haven't got things right, Passworthy. Our fathers and our fathers' fathers cleaned up the old order of things because it killed children. It killed those who were unprepared for death. Because it tormented people in vain. Because it outraged human pride and dignity. Because it was an ugly spectacle of waste. But that was only a beginning. There's nothing wrong in suffering if you suffer for a purpose. Our revolution didn't abolish danger or death. It simply made danger and death worthwhile. Cabal. Cabal, the gun's in urgent danger. It's a race against time, not to save it. Theodor Copulus is up with a crowd of people already. He's going to the space gun now. They're going to break it up. They say it's the symbol of your tyranny. As a weapon, bars of metal. They can smash delicate apparatus. They can do endless mischief. But you have a traffic control. Can't they produce the police? Very few. We've nothing but the gas of peace, and it isn't ready. It'll take hours yet. We must hold this crowd back at any cost for a time until the gas of peace is ready. Is this... Space well, we've stopped the airways. They'll have to go afoot. And they'll take an hour or more to get there, even those who've already started. That gun mustn't have broken up. After all the final experiments have been made, when everything was ready... When everything was ready? If they smash up that infernal gun, then honor is satisfied and you needn't go. They won't smash the gun. Suppose the gun was fired now. Would the cylinder reach the moon? It would miss and fly into outer space. It's five now. If the gun were fired before seven... And it could be? Yes. Then... We go now. No, no, no. Oh, I don't know what to say, but don't go, don't go. Oh, but, Father, we must go now, or we may never go. And then for the rest of our lives, we'll feel we've shirked and lived in vain. We must go now.
quickly, this way. If you go up to the platform, we'll guard this below. Right. Contract all your muscles when the concussion comes. In five minutes, you'll be able to get loose and move about. What do you want here? We, we want, want to save these young, young people, people from your experiments. We want to put an end to this inhuman foolery. We mean to destroy that gun. We have a right to do what we like with our lives, with our sort of lives. We don't grudge you your artistic life. You have safety, plenty, all you want. We want to make the world safe for men. No one prevents you. How can we do that on your sound inventions of perpetually changing life for us? When you're everlastingly contriving strange things, when you make what we think great seem small, when you make what we think strong seem feeble, we don't want you in the same world with us. We don't want this expedition. We don't want mankind to go out to the moon and to the planets. We shall hate you more if you succeed than if you fail. Destroy the gun! Before you can even reach the base of the gun, it'll be fired. Beware of the concussion! Beware of the concussion!
faint gleam of light. I feel that what we've done is monstrous. What they've done is magnificent. Will they come back? Yes. And go again and again. Till the landing is made and the moon is conquered. This is only a beginning. But if they don't come back, my son and your daughter, what of that, Cabal? Then presently others will go. Oh, God, is there never to be any age of happiness? Is there never to be any rest? Rest enough for the individual man. Too much and too soon, and we call it death. But for man, no rest and no ending. He must go on, conquest beyond conquest. First this little planet and its winds and waves, and then all the laws of mind and matter that restrain him. Then the planets about him. And at last, out across immensity to the stars. And when he has conquered all the deeps of space and all the mysteries of time, still he will be beginning. But we're such little creatures. Poor humanity is so fragile, so weak. Little, little animals. Little animals. And if we're no more than animals, we must snatch each little scrap of happiness and live and suffer and pass. Mattering no more than all the other animals do or have done. It is this or that. All the universe or nothing. Which shall it be, Oswald? Which shall it be?